Well, where do we start? All right. Hey, School Zone podcast listeners, this is Matt coming at you from sunny Stephenville, Texas. Um, mm-hmm. Excited about hopping on today. This is our actual first video podcast, um, which will be made available on YouTube at the School Zone podcast channel, as well as audio at schoolzonepodcast.com. And this summer, we've been spending a lot of time reaching out with companies that we haven't come across in the the trade shows and in all the the events that we've worked over the years. And um, today is no exception. So I'm really, really excited to have Alex DeMio on from School Fund Center. Alex, say hello to the school zone audience. Hello, everybody. So you've got a bio that's like a mile long. You've been (laughs) in the tech industry and the ad industry uh, for about 30 years, I guess. Give us just a brief synopsis of where you come from and why the heck you're in the school fundraising space today. What a path to have traveled. Uh, (laughs) So let's start with, uh, all right, as a teenager, I saved up money working at a local grocery store. And uh, near the store, there was a a pizza place that had an Asteroids video game, Pac-Man. And I was just fascinated. So I took that money I was saving up for a car and bought an Apple II computer and started designing video games in my bedroom alone. I met some guys and they were working with a company out in California. I was in New Jersey. That's why I talk this way from New Jersey. And, um, they were working with a company called Activision and they hired me and I made a lot of video games for years, starting from a teenager, took my company public and I was only 29 years old. Things were happening way fast and it was really wonderful. So now here I am in school fundraising and it's almost like, well, I made all those games so kids wouldn't do their homework. So now I'm paying my penance. And I'm helping schools raise money. Uh, I uh, the transition really happened as the internet came uh, was coming really into play. Uh, and in the '90s, I was doing some games online for retailers. You know, uh, for Kmart, Help Santa make toys, a little toy factory with different toys in it, and fun things like that. And an opportunity arose where they were looking to do a loyalty program. So a partner of mine and I got together and said, well, let's not do a vanilla program. Let's do something that involves all the schools near the stores. It was called Kmart School Spirit. And it raised millions of dollars for schools. It was very easy to do. It involved in-store key tags and things like that where the school handed them out swiped it at the store, the school made money and it knew which school it was based on the little code on the card. That was my foray into school fundraising. And then I continued to do it uh, through, you know, the new millennium. And what happened was uh, other companies got involved like DirecTV, Foot Locker, Subway and others. And then there was an accidental discovery as much as I'd like to say, hey, I just came up with this idea all by myself while I was reflecting. Well, not quite. (laughs) What happened was some of the schools were asking to promote these in-store shopping programs. Could we put little banners or anything on our websites to reach the parents? And so uh, I told my designers, sure, do it. And so they, you know, they made some little banners and buttons and stuff that promoted all the different sponsors, go to the store and shop with your card. And then voila. One day, I'm looking at a, um, a report that usually tells us how many visits have come to our website, and it was off the charts, Matt. Like, I was like, it's a virus. It's an attack. Like, I, I just didn't know what to do. You know, Mr. Non-Technical Guy here. And so I reach out to my guys to make a long story finally come to a close here. It turns out that... It wasn't an attack or anything. What it was is those banners and everything were on our servers. And every time someone visited your school's website, it hit our server. And I said, slow down, guys. Are you telling me 
that this little handful of schools could generate that much traffic, and they did a report and analysis, and then I said, okay, it's time to do something different. It's time to look at how many people are visiting a K-12 website locally in the community and figure out a way to affect fundraising through K-12 websites in a very easy way. No heavy lifting for the school, no begging, no baking, just pure fundraising through the school's website. And that's what we've built, and that's what School Fund Center is, and that's what we're doing. So I got to go back to, to real early in your story because I was one of those kids who didn't – well, I, I had an Apple IIe at one point in high school. Oh, yeah. But, um, I was one of those kids that was going to the video game arcade and just blowing all my money in the arcade without any inspiration to do <laughs> – <laughs> To, to do anything in that, that world. Um, but man, I remember my riding my bike down to one of the arcades in town. I lived outside of the Chicago area. And man, a couple times a week going down and, and spending my allowance money or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, when you're with Activision, are, are there any titles that we would know that, that you had an opportunity to work on? Well, the title that was I was the most excited about for my time with Activision was called The Great American Cross Country Road Race. It was a car racing game, and what you did is you chose different paths across the country, and it was sort of true to the number of miles, and you'd see the different skylines and stuff racing across the country. That was the one that I was really the most uh, proud of. But after Activision, you know, I was trying to go a little quick there, but the guys and I, we spun off our own video game company, Absolute Entertainment, and we developed a lot of great titles. The one, one I, I have three daughters. One I'm very proud of was we did the first little girls video game, the Barbie Dream Adventure. And, you know, the girls were never getting a chance to play the games, really. And so we beat Little Mermaid to market by a few months. You know, it really went well. We did, uh, we designed a... Uh, the Simpsons games, the first one, Bart versus the Space Mutants. Uh, we, we, we could be on here a long time if I told you where I got the <laughs> idea for that storyline. Maybe we'll talk about that offline. Uh, we did uh, Home Alone, the Home Alone games, Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2. A lot of really great titles, uh, you know, and uh, popular properties and things like that. And it was very exciting. I, I kind of miss it, but I don't regret the path that we took here because... Right now, there are a lot of great fundraisers out there, but we've got something really special. And I'm really glad that we're doing what we have. And someday, what I'm sort of hoping for, Matt, is once the schools are really making money through this, through this network, by having a, this connection on their website, maybe we could start doing some edutainment, you know, with sponsors and stuff like that. And I could do some of that fun stuff again in a very educational way where uh, learning can be fun. So who knows? Maybe I'll be back in that arena just in a, a different ballgame. So how did you um, – you obviously had the technological background or the team to help you execute um, that technology. How did you guys go about and start, you know, essentially setting up affiliate relationships with all of these, these major retailers? I mean, if you go to the website, you know – it appears to be just about anybody you can think of that, uh, you know, the schools have the ability to essentially generate revenue from and through. So how did all that process come about? It was uh, a couple of things were working in our favor. We had a really great track record having done the previous in-store programs with the key tags. So we had that. That's a really great way to open up a conversation. You know, hey, by the way, we drove billions of dollars in sales <laughs> through um, commercial part fundraising partnerships with schools. Great door opener. Then showing the technology and the reach and the potential, that really had a lot to do with it. So the sponsors that you see now, and that, that group is growing, they're excited about this because look at it from their perspective. We are, we are out to help schools. The end result is helping schools. But... Let's face certain facts. 
as a retailer, if I have a couple of thousand stores and I'm competing with A, B, C, and D, I really do want to be the guy who stands out in the community and is endorsed by these schools and I'm out there in front of these parents locally. So even though I'm a big giant, you know, multi-billion dollar national company, well, actually, all of a sudden here, I've got some community appeal and it's giving me mass impact as a business, but there I am in the community. And that's the best way to be these days. So how long has School Fund Center been around then? We started this business back in April of 2012. Um, you know, the parent company, School Bell Partners. Right. So you're, so you're wondering, what have you been doing since 2012? Well, there was a lot of time involved uh, developing the technology, making it so that an eighth grade kid could add the Fund Center to the school's website if they were asked to. Developing the relationships with the sponsors, and doing a lot of beta testing, testing, making sure things worked. Everything started really coming together over the past year and then this back to school. So it's fortuitous that you somehow reached out uh, to me because right here, this back to school, we're in the midst of a national launch. We've sent out mailers to schools, emails, uh, attended some PTA conferences in, in certain states, and um, it's ready to roll. So it's been a long path, but with this, Matt, trust me, I'm sure you see it. You got to get it right. It's not like that software that got released a little early. No, it's got to be right. And it's right now. It's ready to rock and roll. Awesome. So um, how many are you primarily working with school? I mean, I, I know you can work with schools virtually anywhere, I would guess, because of the technology. But that said, are you primarily in the Northeast right now in New York, New Jersey or or, I mean, are you guys working with schools all over the place? Well, what we did was we did a, a, a beta test in one county in Alabama just to keep it isolated to make sure everything was working. And then ironed out some wrinkles. I mean, you know, we, we try to be perfect, but we fall short sometimes. So we ironed out some wrinkles and got everything working perfectly. And now it's really not focused on any particular area. You had it right from the beginning, since this works with any K-12 school in their website. We're reaching out across the country and we're picking up new schools and districts in Florida, Texas, where you are, California, uh, Michigan, uh, around the country. So we're expecting to see this grow without any um, stronger weight toward any particular area. Uh, we're looking to really reach this evenly across the country. Are you finding that individual schools are reaching out to you or is it normally a district decision that maybe a school hears about you but ultimately has to go to the district anyway and then if one school's doing it as simple as it is we might as well bring everybody on board or or how does the implementation kind of typically work thus far in what you've seen? There are a few ways, and you pointed out a couple right off the top of your head. There's a situation where a district would see this and have seen this, and they say, let's get on board. Let's get all of our schools connected. That, from our perspective, of course, is our favorite way <laughs> because – uh, you know, it's like the old game of jacks, bounce the ball once and <laughs> pick up as many as you can. So that's the best way to do it. But also you have schools who come directly to us and they say, we want to try this. And they have um, the wherewithal to update the website themselves and add us to it. And then, like you said before, hey, it's working. Let's show this to the district. All of the schools in our district need money. So that way works too. Another way is the parent teacher organization or the PTA. They do a lot of hard work raising money for schools. We reach out to them too. And they come back and they say, we'd like to put this on our Facebook page. We'd like to put this on our PTA page on the website. Or we'd like to take this to the principal and say, hey, here's something we can get behind because there's no heavy lifting 
but a tremendous amount of money can be raised. So there are a lot of different ways for it to happen, and we're set up for pretty much every path. Our K-12 reps, they're, they're all over it, finding the best way to get this up and running, and then make sure it moves through the community or the district. Awesome. You know, the thing I love about this, Alex, I've been in the fundraising uh, industry for a decade myself. My company, School Spirit Bending, is a hassle-free way for schools to raise money, uh, just like what you guys doing is. And um, what I what has allowed us to do some really cool thing was with our company and is allowing you to do the exact same thing is this is something that just kind of happens in the background. So there's, there's no big rallies. There's no big, you know, assemblies. There's not the, the, the marshalling of the troops, the kids, the parents, the faculty, all of that. It's just awareness and letting parents know that, Hey, there's this button here on our website that you can use. And every time you use it to shop from any of the affiliates that are available, the school makes money. I love that because there isn't a whole lot of decision that ha is having to be made. We're not asking the kids to get involved. And in the process, this is either a very low uh, and hassle free way to raise money, or it's a great supplement to the other things that they're going to do anyway. It's, it's like in Texas. I know they're limited primarily because of sales tax right. to, two, to two events a year. And, and that's when they're, you know, kind of selling stuff and the school gives them a tax, you know, two different tax free events, essentially for not to pay sales tax. Well, this doesn't really fit into that. That's right. So they can keep doing their events, but then they work with you guys and, and have another means of developing um, revenue as well. Let me ask you this. Do you guys work with organizations outside of schools at all, or are you, are, are you completely just doing schools? We've been approached by um, some faith-based groups and colleges, universities, and it works. It's a, it's, a, it's a widget that works. So we've talked to them, but right now our primary focus is K-12 education. It's got a tremendous need, and K-12s have, as you were just citing, the ability to put efforts into all kinds of ways to fill budgetary gaps through different types of fundraising. We find ourselves to be what you said, supplemental. We can work alongside any fundraising and just make it easier for the educators to focus on education instead of fundraising because that's really what it boils down to is when teachers are collecting money, counting inventory, how many bags of M&Ms did Johnny say he sold and how many are left and how many dollar bills? Well, that's taking away from education. So we stay in that focus. The other areas that have come to us, it can work with them too, but we think the K-12 is the best one. It needs it the most and it's best suited for the K-12 universe across this country. But you will probably see, and we may talk again about some other areas, uh, maybe moving to higher education and into some other areas, because there are other lo locally based websites out there that reach the community that we could connect with. So if a school says, you know, we want to do this, what is the onboarding process for them? How does that work? What kind of timeline is normally necessary? for them to contact you and then to be, you know, set up and rock rolling, that type of thing. It can happen pretty quickly. The uh, team was excited about one school last week who signed up and placed their order for their fund center. And less than one hour later, they were live. So let's talk about that onboarding. It's, pretty much a one, two, three. You choose your sponsors, you place your order, you add your fund center. So let's, you know, that was pretty quick. We could look at each step. When you come, you enter to, to this website, schoolfundcenter.com. You 
enter your zip code and it lets you know which of the sponsors are in your area. You check off which ones you want. You give a little basic information, your email. Also have the ability to put a little message to your webmaster because understand, for the most part, school decision makers can pull the trigger on this fundraising, but they don't have the personal technical wherewithal to update the website. So they place their order, they add the webmaster, then the order comes by email just after our people do a little vetting of the school, making sure you know it's truly a representative, truly K-12 school. And then the webmaster just gets a link in email that shows him some simple, what they call a code block. Uh, I just call it a widget or like a, a billboard. <laughs> and they just paste that onto the area of their site that's the most visible, most visited. So, you know, there's the most activity. And voila, you're there. So onboarding can happen very quickly. The next part after being live, of course, is getting the word out to the school for the PTA, for the principal, for the development director, assistant uh, principal, to let the parents know, hey, guess what? Before you make that next big purchase, before you, before you do that renovation in your house, make sure you go to the website and go to homedepot.com and order all those tiles and all of those uh, materials. Next time you need uh, the pet food, go to the website. Just don't go straight to Petco. Go through the school's website because we're covering all the major areas that you shop every day now Fundraising is easy as shopping. And that's an important message because, Matt, you've been through this before. When someone does something new, it usually requires some change in behavior. And in this particular case, it's a pretty easy change, but nevertheless, it does need to get out there. The word needs to get out there. And you know once someone does it, once someone says, hey, I, I clicked on Verizon and we switched our service and the school got 75 bucks. Oh, this is great. Well, they'll remember that, and they'll probably continue to do it. So is there a breakdown on the site of, you know, this uh, retailer provides X percent and this one that? Um, I know that there, I, I just noticed that, you know, you could click and it would show the average family will raise X amount of dollars typically through this company within a year. Um, but is there a way for the schools to focus on those companies that maybe provide a higher percentage when they're picking out um, the companies that they want to uh, to have shown on their fund center. Um, that's a great question. The there is a breakdown by each sponsor, each retailer or store that says exactly what the contribution to the school will be. Now we ourselves. We add a little something to that by putting, um, we have what we call every click counts, where we contribute a small donation because, you know, we have to be careful here, <laughs> but uh, a small donation for every click. All of that's laid out on the website. Now, as far as the focus on, you know, well, is this, is this retailer giving me a better deal, you know, than this other one? Should I focus on this one? At the end of the day, when you consider the frequency of the shopping and the different categories and the fact that they're, ev they're, they're everyday categories to the typical um, school family household, it's really good to really pretty much choose them all. One of the ways that people you would see aren't choosing one versus another sometimes is the school's feeling, well, is this something that the parents know about or, or is it too many? Are they going to get confused? If they choose all of them, which many do, the average family, you know, all the research on what the average family shopping with that type of store would be, one family could raise $400 in a year for the school just by shopping, never writing a check, never baking a cupcake. Now, I'm not saying don't write checks, and I'm not saying don't bake cupcakes. Do everything you can to help your school, of course, but be comforted to know that there's an opportunity for a family to bring hundreds of dollars into the school just for shopping the way they would normally shop. And that's, that's really the key right there. So for the most part, you will see they'll pretty much select them all or most of them. And 
each retailer's deal, when you consider the frequency and the average purchase, it almost balances out as a very good deal every time for the school, comparatively from sponsor to sponsor. Now, just, just to confirm it as well, pricing is the exact same, right? All we're doing is taking a bit of the margin that that the, all these businesses have for for charity or or whatever or affiliate type relationships. Yes. What? Um, here's a way to look at it. Here's a way to look at that issue. Right now, companies in the United States, marketers are spending over seventy billion dollars to market themselves online. That is a big number and it's still growing. Online advertising in this country has surpassed television advertising. Matt, can you believe this? How fast did this happen? Now, when we look at those numbers, and they're very large, there are different opportunities for these stores to advertise certain ways. You know, they can pay for the advertising, pay for ads, they could do banners, they could do search, they could do all of those things. One of the things that they could do is what they call like a bounty, you know, an incentive. Uh, instead of paying this much for an ad, or if I put up my hand, this much for an ad, I'll pay this much for a purchase. And it fits inside of their budgets. So my goal, and who knows, you might be part of this goal coming true. But my goal, if we could get one seventieth, if we could get the word out to this industry spending all this money and get one seventieth, one billion dollars to education. Now one seventieth sounds, hey, that sounds doable. One billion sounds, is he crazy? Well, it is one seventieth. And if we're able to do that, because there are 132,000 K-12 local organizations in the United States. They're all using websites now. We can get that word out. It's a good deal for the retailer. They made connections and they have the, that, that social responsibility that they're all talking about. Well, they're doing it 24-7, 365 by partnering with these schools through their local websites and a significant amount of that money that $70 billion, that can be going to the schools and it's all at the same price. This is the, this is the interesting part, Matt. You could go to right now, gap.com and buy jeans straight there and pay 30 bucks for this pair of jeans. You could go to a school website, click on gap.com and pay the same $30. Scenario two, you just help your school. Probably the easiest fundraising that you ever did for a school when you think about it, because you need the jeans anyway. I'm not saying you need jeans, but if you do, you can try that. Awesome. Very, very cool. Is there anything else you can think of that you want to make sure you share with the school's own audience? Um, yes. The... There's a lot that you're burdened with financially in the K-12 educational arena. It's getting more and more difficult to support music programs, art programs. Even some sports programs are getting cut back. And that, you know, sports, that was like the automatic <laughs> when we were in school. Uh, so my message to you is that we have focused very hard on the fact that you do have financial needs, that you work very hard to educate these children, and that there's not a lot of time left in the day. So what we're doing is we're not asking for much time out of that day, but we're creating a channel that can tap your financial needs into the everyday shopping of your families. And we really believe that's going to make a difference. To your audience, I would say, please visit schoolfundcenter.com. Fund with the D center, because it sounds like the fun center too, but 
please visit. And why am I asking you to visit? Because I want you to do this, and then I want to hear back from you about those books that you couldn't afford that you can, those musical instruments you couldn't afford, and now you can, those uniforms, the equipment, the computers. Microsoft's one of our partners, the computers. I really want to hear back from you after you've done this and hear that it did make a difference. So you are doing a better job of educating because you're being given the resources you need because you're short on resources and it's happening all over the place and we'd love to be part of the answer. I hope that wasn't too preachy. <laughs> no, no, that was awesome, Alex. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited uh, to see more and more companies that are finally harnessing technology like you guys are to the benefit of the schools because I still see so many companies that are, that are, stuck 20 and 30 years ago oh boy and the world has changed and there's a lot of schools that are looking for something new they're looking for something different they're looking for something that will allow them to keep their focus on the kids instead of all these other things yes allow them to do what they're best at which is educating and then allow companies like yours and mine to come in and and use our expertise to help them raise the money that they need couldn't have said it better. Awesome. Well, Alex DeMio, thank you very much for coming into the school zone. Um, I'm looking forward to getting this episode out and, uh, and folks hearing more about School Fund Center and what you guys are doing. Hey, School Zone audience, if you like the podcast, do me a favor. Um, go to iTunes and leave a review. Um, a one to a five, completely up to you, but the, the higher that the reviews totals and the higher the number of stars that we get allows us to be exposed on iTunes to more and more and more people, which means more and more schools, uh, their administrators, educators, and volunteers get a chance to, to know and learn about School Zone and really, real, really cool companies like Alex's. The other thing is, for those of you that aren't aware, um, we've been doing this show for about two years now. We've done over 100 episodes, um, and we produced this last year the 2017 uh, 10 Top School Fundraising Ideas Guide. You can go to schoolzonepodcast.com slash 2017-guide to download that for free and learn about some some of the companies that we've talked to along the way and then of course you can go to schoolzonepodcast.com and access this interview and any other interview you can think of guys i can't talk and, and and encourage you enough in today's day and age the ability to get educated is so valuable mm -hmm. and what's amazing about a podcast like this is you don't have to go to a trade show and spend days there you don't have to click, or click around all online um, and get kind of partial information or, or have no human interaction at all with a lot of exposure to a lot of companies you might come across. Here, we take the time to dive deep into the backgrounds and, and into the ins and outs of companies like Alex's so that you can be mowing the lawn, you can be working out, you can be driving down the road or doing any number of other things and be getting educated and take advantage of this podcasting technology to stay up to speed, to stay in the know, um, to not get stale and doing the same old things that, that you've done every year, just because in many cases um, we just don't know what else is out there. So um, I encourage you to uh, do more research to definitely get with Alex and his company because it's a no brainer, no matter what else you're doing uh, for your school this year. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to everybody real soon. Thanks guys. Thanks Alex. Thank you.